the United side, for me, there really isn't so much quality there. Of course, we're not going to go into the, the problems that most of the United wingers are having at the moment. What's Avesti? What's your opinion? No, I see. Let me start with Jimmy. We will get there. Let me get there. Someday, somehow, we'll get there. This is one of the most graceful. <laughs> man. You oh, no, no, no. He is. He is. He is. He is. Like, true. Like, true he's, taking it, he's taking he has it no choice. so he has well. Nah, because I've dished a lot. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, mamas and papas, you're welcome to another edition of the show we like to call the Kings of Football Show, coming to you live and direct. We are, of course, brought to you by the official beer of the Premier League and, of course, the king of beers, the one and only Budweiser. Now, of course, if you're listening to us on X, uh, we want to say thank you for joining in. I appreciate each and every one of you. I am Fola Jimmy Lewis, checking with James, I can show up, but you can simply call me King Jimmy. Alongside me is a fellow king of mine. Um, he's been beside me for a long time. He was very much with me as Arsenal secured a victory over Manchester United last time out. Ladies and gentlemen, the king from North London, Ozomena. What do you do, Jimmy? I'm doing great. <laughs> no, the cool thing is um, it's, it's great to be back on the show. Um, I've, I've, I'm looking at staring at a face in front of me, but mm. the good thing is... Today, for the first time on this show, I came bearing gifts. Oh, Santa! And, uh, Santa's coming. Exactly, early. you know what I mean. Well, worried in there towards the end of the year. We're in the ember months already. Don't, aren't don't, we? don't ask me why. Uh, why I put them in bean bags? Because the trash um, symbolizes the performance of uh, that team from Old Trafford. So I decided to cook. Um, you know, sometimes people think I don't know how to cook. Wow. So I went into the kitchen. I cooked up some rice, you know. Uh, this rice, I had to cook it up for like 96 minutes, you know. Uh, so I have like three bowls of this rice. The name tags, I have one for my friend here, Abiola. I don't want. I have one for my brother-in-law, Fam Gerald. Oh, wonderful. And uh, the other king we have on this show, uh, I know right now he's getting ready to evict some people from the house. Uh, Ibuka, so, but the, but the good thing is this rice. I had to cook it for ninety six minutes to make sure that all the nutrients, mm. would, you know, exactly, you know, the, 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 everything, you know, and and, and also the the, the the bottom part is when I look at all these three men, they look like men that don't say their grace before mm, eating, before eating, so that the food will nourish their body. The three aspects of their body exactly, will be nourished. and it would the food will not come sliding out <laughs> of their system. Um, no, 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 exactly, it wouldn't, it wouldn't. So uh, we have this, and of course, uh, to send the food down properly, they have to take a can of Budweiser. Mm. Viola, the floor is yours. Oh, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. Viola Kazi. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's great to be here. Also, what was all that about? I came bearing some gifts, I my brother. I was just a lucky way. Oh, you guys no, just no, got no, really, no, no, really, really lucky. How is, how and is here that you lucky? are, you know, how going is, how all is Shakespeare on us. <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no, no. Santa, I came bearing gifts, my brother. Santa Claus. We don't want your Santa gifts. Santa Claus. <laughs> 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 you know, to stuff your gifts down where oh, right? no, you, you want to stuff them. We don't want. No, you need to have this rice. I'm not going to have it. You need to have these bowls of rice. Well, nice one, nice one, nice one. I'll get. I'll have my day. Every uh, no, no, no. My day is coming. United didn't play, play badly, but Arsenal dominated the game. Yeah, Arsenal, of course. Um, I think that the way it works, but and ultimately the results kind of showed that. I'm not. I'm not sure three one was fully reflective. A victory was reflective. Well, I mean, I'll probably see Arsenal etched it in terms of overall mm. performance, but that's to be expected. They are the home side. Arsenal, whether we like it or not, um, and now a force to be reckoned with. I mean, lots of quality players. They have a way of playing now. You know, it's been what this is the fourth year of Ateta, so some good things have gone on there, and they've built some momentum. And so, right. if you go to the Emirates, I don't think you will seek to dominate. Maybe barring Manchester City, I don't mm -hmm. think anybody can go to the Emirates expecting to dominate. But I thought that United were really settled in the game. I thought that they gave us good as they got, got a lot of really, really good chances. Maybe not a lot, but quite a number of good chances that if they had gone the way, the way of United. It was kind of game where. Whoever got two one was always likely to win. I remember when right. Ganacho scored. Even the commentator was saying this most likely will be. It was that sort of game. It was you know it was you know um, I mean, on the knife edge for a long, long, long to time. Be honest, and to be yes. to be fair, Arsenal didn't create a lot of chances. When you look at that game, the one shining light I, I'd, I'd say for was a Man United fan was the cameo performance from Ganacho. from Rice, no from Rasmus Ho Hoyland. I think I, I wouldn't yeah, say really, I wouldn't really say Ganacho because because yeah, let's be honest yeah. I mean it's, that it's, was some quality. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it was yeah, it was. Yeah, and and if, if you if you look at the United side 
for me, there really isn't so much quality there. Of course, we're not going to go into the the problems that most of the United wingers are having at the moment. Of course, lots of them off field. I mean, most of them they're they're off off field issues and and, and off field problems. You're looking at this team that has spent a whole lot of money. Remember, if you look at the teams since the last three seasons that have spent the most money, United is actually number one. Not um, in terms of like net spend. Because Chelsea, yes, Chelsea, they've spent over a billion, but their net spend, they've sold a whole lot of players and they've made so much money back. So we look at this United side, and yes, we want to give Ten Hag an out and say, yes, he doesn't have the players that he wants. But, you made but, this, but this summer, he spent a whole lot of money this summer. So where are we going with this? What I'm saying is that for where me, United, I, I believe that United will struggle this season. Where I'm going with it in, in line with him believing that is just to remind you of what uh, the great man, Sandy Lisa said last um, time out. He said Manchester United finishing in the top four is not up to them. It's depending on how well the other clubs play. I mean, do you still agree with this? It hasn't been a good start, yeah. and the signs are not looking good. I'll be, I'll be the first to accept. I haven't played really well. I haven't settled into a style of play well. Injuries left, right, and center, and then all of these issues, you know, off field. And there's a way you, you sort of like have an idea of how the season will go, but you want to live in denial. But I don't want to live in that denial. There are too many problems um, at United right now, and it's, so you're saying it's no longer depending on other clubs. It's very clear United issue. I, I, well. I mean, so these things can be repaired. Anthony can be back next week. Which is what I wanted to say Sancho to you. Sancho can be Manchester back next United week. United have struggled a, a number of seasons in the last 20 years. They've had not great starts, yeah. but found a way to get some rhythm in the middle of the season. My worry about... And my, my, still managed to get top four. My worry about this season, though, is that it's almost reminiscent of when Sokja started to struggle mm, in his mm, last season. Mm, mm. I mean, I, I I worry. I'll be honest. I see I, that in Ten Hag right now. You, you mm. can you can see how the team is playing. Seriously, we know you're smart. Even but even if yeah. you are winning, you, you you get the feeling that we don't deserve to win. There's just something about how is is like a, like a storm is gathering, so to speak. The injuries come in, all of the off field issues. The, so you add it all up, and you get the feeling that Ten Hag will be pulling off a big but, miracle. But but, but, but you, B- 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 you made a point where where you talked about the style of play. I mean, I mean you're a United fan. Uh, yes, Jimmy and I we, we get to watch lots of United games. But as a United fan, what exactly is the style of play? I think that actually he said what he wants to do. He wants to turn the team to his transition team. And what do you do in transition? You try to win the ball quickly up, you know, up the pitch, you know, and, and convert that into chances. If you look at the data, some of this holds up. United have won the games, you know, in the in the in the opponents half right. of the pitch more than any team in the league. Created, I think United has a second number of shots. So you can see what he's trying to do. He's failing the eye test, obviously. And the team hasn't brought it together. Like Riley said, the game against Tottenham, there were lots of United winning possession in Tottenham's half and converting them to chances that United ultimately didn't score. But overall, he added it all up and you just feel that it's not coming together. So yeah, you've brought Onana. Yes, that's supposed to help you keep the ball more and build up at the back. But that's not really happening because if you want to do this, it's not just the goalkeeper that has to be comfortable on the ball. The centre-backs centre have to be comfortable. Too. The full-backs have to be comfortable. You know, and the second phase build up as well. You have to really be able to settle into the ball. So you... you you get the feeling that he has a clear idea of what he wants to do, but for many reasons, it's not coming together. Like I said, the stats bear some form of witness to what he's trying to do, but it completely fails the eye test. I, I, I love the fact that, you know, you guys are on the show with me because you find a way every time to kind of just tee me up into what I'm going into next right. in the manner in which I want to go into it. So... I want to agree with you. Looks like you guys had a rehearsal <laughs> 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 to come at me all day today. So, so and I think I'm being too gracious. No, 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 no,
are actually going to go out to play a game and how you prepare for Tottenham, right? That's not exactly the case at Manchester United, which is why I was referring to the culture effect, the change in culture that we were expecting because the personnel hasn't changed as much as we expected it to change. Well, I mean, actually, the personnel has changed. Then I got sold 20 players. It's a lot. Like 20 players have left and he's brought in, I think, what? Yeah, I mean, but, about but, but, but that's not, that's not the point Jimmy's making is about the culture of the of the, of, of the team, not about moving players out. Cause so here's, I, cause here's, cause here's I think I, I, I think I move players what, out, what, but what, the culture what are, you of the are you talking about the team discipline? Are you, what, what exactly no, I mean, are you talking like, about? I'm not, I can't come, come, think, come, come, are you talking about how they play? No, no, if every, you're talking no, about every, culture, every, everything together. You, my biggest criticism of Ten Hag is in his approach to this supposed culture. Because I think that he himself, last season, Look, Ronaldo has been a professional since 19. I know he's not exactly anybody's or many people's, you know, cup of, of fish or cup of tea. But the reality of the matter is that from day one, when you know, Ronaldo started playing, he's never had any issues with any coach over fitness. Ever. The last point a manager would go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ronaldo on is fitness. fitness. And that was the point on which then Ag chose to go toe-to-toe -to -toe -to -toe with Ronaldo. Now, if you make that happen, you can't in this season where you say Ronaldo missed preseason and so you think he does. Ronaldo is always fit. Ronaldo is the fittest footballer ever in history, mm -hmm. right? If you say Ronaldo is not fit enough, in the same season, you gave Jordan Sancho three months off when he had fitness issues. You can't have a problem with Ronaldo about fitness and discipline and prop up Anthony Marshall, who is a symbol of indolence and laziness and lack of responsibility. Mm -hmm. And so I think that Ten Hag himself has crossed lines. I will you can have, like I said, you can have other issues with Ronaldo. It cannot be about fitness and discipline. So you can't punish Ronaldo, prop up Marshall and prop up Sancho. And then one year down the line, you had problems. What are you expecting? When somebody is not fit, you send him on a three-month break. What's the incentive for him to be fit? Of course he wants to go on another three-month break because he's not fit. So it's time for a hot take then. Because my hot take was going to be that as we have discussed Manchester United's chances of making it to the top four, then who will be in the top four? The question is... Tottenham will finish in the top four. Do you agree with this? And why do you think that is? Just in, as you explain, yeah. have it in mind yeah. that you're explaining exactly what is not available at Manchester United. Okay, so here's the thing. I think that Tottenham have a good chance of making the top four for very, for very simple reasons. Like I said, um, it used to be that the only worry that you had when you played Tottenham mainly was Harry Kane. Mm -hmm. Now they have, they have created lots of points. Now you have to worry about James Madison, who, you know, rightly was player of the month. Of the month. Um, you have to worry about Bisoma in the middle of the park and the right. way, you know, he's playing right now. He's playing really, really well. Yep. Um, for me, most impressive is how they've settled at the back. Under Mourinho and under, under Conte, who are managers renowned for being able to organize a defense, Tottenham could still not organize themselves enough, you know, to play at the back. Without spending a lot of money, it does look like they settled really well. Romero is playing well. I've not seen him made it. Uh, make a big mistake this season. He used to have one in him, <laughs> you know, in every game. He's actually even scoring goals now. Yeah. And so if you look at, the team looks um, really, really solid at the back, in the middle of the park, lots of problems, like I said. And going forward, I mean, so once you create lots of chances the way that they do, I don't want to say it doesn't really matter who's up front, but whoever it is up front, you have good chances of scoring because you constantly always create chances. We saw them in the game, was it against Burnley? They scored five goals. The easy look have scored 10, you know, and all the Every other games time they went against forward. United. Yes, like you said, a rocky first 20, 30 minutes, but once, once they, they settled into together, the game, yep. they never took their foot, you know, Not off the better. Clearly, I still want to see them against other top sides, but they started really well. I think they've won, what, three of their games, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And they've scored quite a number of goals. They are not conceding. The goalkeeper, Vicari, as well, has settled really, really well. Yeah, yeah. So they've made some changes that are not high profile. They are not exactly headline grabbing, but they are fundamental changes. And the manager seems to be somebody who is very reasonable, is likable, and the squad. So managers like Mourinho and Conte, they come with a big reputation. And on one hand, they want to live up to that reputation. And they sort of like want to drag the players up maybe a bit too quickly to come to the level that they are in terms of having a winning mentality and going for it. Right. I think that we post the Koglu, it's good that he doesn't come with that big reputation. And the players also don't, yes, they will improve, but they don't have to make this rapid fire Change. jump from yep. six to fighting for championship. Right. So, and in that, they can settle in, the take team. on the changes that the manager wants, and then gradually they can build up. It should be said, though, that even though they started well, Mourinho started well. Conte started well. Even Nuno started well. <laughs> started well. Nuno was manager of the month in his first season mm. at Tottenham. He was gone in the third month. And so, yes, really, really good start. I do, I do think that generally the signs look very good, but Tottenham at Tottenham. Yeah, but I think so no, but top four what, for you? Ah, 
So there's there's City, there's Liverpool, there's Arsenal, there's Brighton, even though they have Europe, Tottenham. Tottenham have Conference League, don't they? No. Nothing. No Europe. Nothing at all. So Tottenham and Chelsea, no Europe. Yep. Zero. That could be key, you know? That really could be key. So what's your... Are they making I'll another? go for Brighton. Brighton's got too many goals. They create so too Tottenham many chances. So Tottenham doesn't make the top four for you? Maybe fifth. Fifth. Yeah. No, no, no. What, what, no. what I was going to say is, if you look at the... Uh, talking about the profiles of the man the last managers that came came to Tottenham, you look right. at Conte. When Conte walks through that door, the only thing you're thinking about is tro are trophies. You have to win trophies. When uh, Mourinho walks into the door, which is what you're thinking, unfair, what, what, you're, what you're thinking about is trophies. You have to win trophies. Now, Postecoglou has come into the club at, at a point of, at a point in time where the expectations. I mean, it, it's not really a bad thing, but the expectations have actually dropped. Your best player in Harry Kane has left the club. So, if you're if you're those players in the dressing room. You're not walking. You're not walking onto the field with so much expectations on your shoulders. All you, all you know now is well, you, 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 the mentality is we have a slow build. We're just this is a project. So you have that project type mentality. And most times for for some certain players, that's what separates the world class players from the average uh, players. Is the world class players are able to deal with those expectations. Now it will be interesting to see if Tottenham finish in the top four this season, how well they're able to push on from there because. I mean, you talked about the spending. They've, they actually spent more than Arsenal did. They spent over a hundred something million That's pounds. That's why I said they made this. this. They, I mean, they, they made some. But key, what, what they do? They were key they signings. Says, so James Mad James Madison for it's not a headline grab. No, I mean Vicario is not a headline grab. But but, but, it's, but, right? but, but, but these they, are but they, these are signings that they had to make as a football club because you knew that Hugo Lloris was 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 leaving. So you have to actually bring in a decent goalkeeper that was going to help Posakoglu play the brand of football that he wanted to play. But I would remind everyone, and this is not from people who usually say also oh, you're, you're a sports hater, but Vicario has actually looked shaky. The problem is, or the, the good thing that's worked in his favor is most of the, f the games that they've played, he hasn't been under so much duress, under so much pressure. So that has actually helped him. Because if you watch the first game, he was actually flopping and flapping at lots of balls once, once they came into the box. So I think that's, yeah, something, I think that, 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 that's, that's something that it, it would be nice to, to, to look out for. But yes, this sports team this year, I see them actually uh, finishing in the top four for sure. So you, think, you see them finishing yeah, the top four. Yeah. So top four for you would be? Arsenal, City, Liverpool, and Spurs. In that order, I believe. Yep. One hundred percent. I love that. <laughs> uh, if you're listening on X right now, um, we're gonna come to you right about now because I need to get uh, your opinion on Tottenham making the top four. We're not talking about Manchester United no more. We're actually talking about Tottenham Hotspur right now. Will they be making the top four this season? As we come onto the X platform, I want to remind you again, Nigerian Scouser, it was your birthday or is your birthday? Want to say happy birthday to you uh, as you have yep. been one of our most uh, regular uh, listeners on the X space and we appreciate you and as such we are going to come to you first yes, we should. to uh, give a hot take and also have your moment and uh, respond to our happy birthday for you everyone on the space please uh, give him a shout out and um, show him some love Nigerian Scouser you got the floor talk to us yeah good morning uh, thank morning. you for the birthday wishes Happy birthday, bro. Yeah. Happy birthday, yeah, happy my, birthday my brother. Yeah, it was yesterday. Thank oh, you. More thank life, you. more life, more life, more life. So, yeah, what thank do you, you think? Tottenham, much. will they finish in the top four? At the start of the season, I would have said a very, very bold no. Okay. But now my head is a lot more shaky. But, I mean, I hate sports. I've, I've made that very clear for a long time. It's I your don't birthday. Know talk your just... talk. Yeah. <laughs> but just for that reason, for that sentiment alone, I would still say no. They won't finish in the top four. But then Why? I would be surprised if they do. Why, why do you think they won't finish in the top four? They've started the season very well. The players are receptive of uh, Postacoglu's ways. They're scoring goals at the rate of knots. Uh, they have no midweek issues at all. Clubs like Man U, Chelsea, Newcastle have all been shaky in the start of the season. And Newcastle and Manchester United have more games to play. So why do you think Tottenham won't yeah, be I, able to manage and, and pivot their way to the top four? I feel it's not more, it's more of I've not seen enough to be sure that they would make the top four rather than me being certain that they won't. It's just I four just feel games. I need to see more from them. Yeah. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get your contribution much later on on the shows. I mean, I'm not, should I be saying keep it locked? Because you're always locked on right here. We appreciate <laughs> you, my bro. And for everyone else on. Um, uh, space we would definitely be coming back to you shortly but let's go into the weekend outlook i mean congratulations to all the 
Nigerians out there that got the 6 0 victory from the Super Eagles. I think that was a good thing to have in the international break yeah. as against some things we've been having in other international yeah, breaks. Yeah, it was a hat trick, actually. It was uh, exactly. Uh, he yeah. finished our uh, top top goal scorer for the qualifiers with 10 goals. I yep. think he'll continue to do that for a while. How, how soon do you think he'll break the record? Um, yeah, I think he's, he's, he's yeah. Eight, a eight, 18 goals behind. No, not a couple, couple years. A couple of years. He's got uh, 10 goals in this qualifying I'll, round. I'll probably say like maybe two or he's three. 17 goals. Two, two, years. Uh, two years. A couple two, of years. Two years, actually, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 17 goals off. That's yeah, an average 17 of 18 goals yeah. off. Okay. But the cool thing about that game was, um, t- talking about like the forward players, was uh, Ihanacho was playing like, we had a three in midfield, so Ihanacho was playing on the right side of the three in midfield. So that's why I want to use goal for me was the best goal uh, that day because the play, the, the, pass, the passage of play between yeah, uh, Ihanacho, um, Osimen, and Awoni was beautiful. The last pass from Kelechi to, to Awoni for that finish was beautiful. So I think in terms of creativity, that's where my problem is my my uh, fear is going to be was the creativity from the midfield areas but if you are able to play it will be an Ihana Cho in those positions with Wilfred holding it as a defensive midfield player that can actually give us a base uh, to play off of if you're wondering how Ozo has so much in-depth knowledge of that game he was actually there um doing some work uh for the organizing committee that of course makes it happen if you don't know please let me tell you now Ozo member of CAF Oh, no, no, no. Thank, thanks, my brother. Thanks. You understand? Thanks. Slow and steady. Don't be mouth. You understand? <laughs> King Tins. Slow and steady, my <laughs> You understand? You understand? Match commission, guys. I love it. I love it. Anyways, back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. It's Kings of Football Show brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers, the official beer of the Premier League. And the Premier League is what we're focusing on right now. Let's look at the Liverpool side of it now. Obviously, you and Klopp's conversations um, in the last uh, couple of days has been more about John Henderson deciding to leave uh, because he couldn't guarantee him um, a starting position yeah, in the new look midfield. Yeah. Um, give me your assessment of that new look midfield and are they that much better off without Henderson and some of the guys they had? In I the mean, clearly, um, a younger midfield, um, full of legs. Um, Zobo has settled, he has settled brilliantly. Brilliant. Um, I think I was looking at the data and last season they were doing I think that at this stage of season they are done. You can never go wrong with Zobo. Yeah, <laughs> 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 I think they are done what maybe sixty six presses or something, and this season mm. they are trending maybe two hundred. So you can see that far more legs, and if you know how Klopp likes to play, obviously he's yeah. you know he's really really key. So he's a brand new midfield, lot of energy. Uh, I think that McAllister hasn't really really settled in well, but yeah, that was the one one that I, I have if, not really but seen. But eventually he's a really good player, so eventually he's going to settle gonna in settle well. In. And because they have that brand new midfield. Um, they are just a completely different side, right? Um, so yeah, um, that, that 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 has put them in a really, really. I think they are ten points now. That has put them in a really, really good position. And if you look at all of the teams in terms of how teams have played, how many points you put on board, what the team looks like. But you, you don't think there's been a Jekyll and Hyde kind of performance from Liverpool in terms of some games they looked extremely dominant, some games they start off well and then they just pitter out. Uh, so <laughs> it's kind of like they sh- they show something and then no, they I, I, or I, they don't show it and then all of a sudden it comes out. I think that they are still bubbling under the surface. Yeah, I get There's that. There's still more to come, That's but they right. haven't yeah. had to bring it out. I think that what brings out this sort of performance you're speaking about mm. at the beginning. And, and, for, and, and for me, that, that's the scary thing about this Liverpool side. And, and, and Like there's and more to like, come. Exactly. You, you, you said it right, um, rightfully so. If you look at the way this team, they are performing, you look at Darwin Nunez. Nunez will get a ton of chances there. He, uh, Nunez always finds a way to put himself in the best positions, but he doesn't yep. finish as well as he should. Yeah, but he will. And, get and, no, no, but, but, but he will. And if you look at Liverpool, they have like a front four that they could always choose from. They've got Salah, Jota, Nunez, Gakpo, Luis Diaz as well. Luis Diaz. So they have a five. They have. They've got five that will quality walk players into any team. that will walk into any team and play. I'm playing in, the, in those. In those oh yeah, no, they will. No, no, but no, they are no, good. No, 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 they will. Hunt, <laughs> not no, in Man City they, no, or uh, uh, excluding, uh, uh, excluding Man City maybe. But they would. I mean, if excluding I, maybe United. If if, if 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 Gakpo if Gakpo was in Arsenal. <laughs> I'll, I'll put Havertz on the bench and, pl- and play Gakpo in, in place of Havertz. 100%. If you were there, if I now, I'll play you 100%, you know, like now, I'll play you know, 100%, I'll do that. Guys, what's Havertz? What's your opinion? No, it's easy. Let me start with you. We will get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Someday, somehow, we'll get there, to be honest. We will get there because, trust me, I'm so crying. I don't understand what's going on. No, you see me watching Germany. I'm like, where's this guy? Show me something I can't see. That's that one. You know, you know, you know, he was at Chelsea. You know when you know you know when you know you're in trouble is I'll go on YouTube and, and let's find out over <laughs> Harvard at Leverkusen. Leverkusen. That's that, that's how bad it is. Because I want I want because I, I want to watch something that can give me hope. some type of hope that I, is going to turn that, I, that, I, that I, is going I, to, I, to I, turn, I, turn I, out. Let's have a Harvard Champions League final. 
You wouldn't yeah. like that. No, 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 Okay. Yes, they are good. Like uh, regarding the fact that they've been very well recently, they are new coach and they are not even feeling the uh, the laws of hurricane. Right. I think still coping fine, and I see a new transition there. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, keep your luck right here, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's time for me to bring you my special delight that I've served, and now. I'm bringing in someone that some people are afraid of, but they have to sit beside him today. Ladies and gentlemen, he's an Arsenal fan. He's my friend, my brother. Please welcome Odogu Mali himself. The one and only, Il Bliss Iligati. What's happening, big boss? I'm all right. Please, <laughs> shake, shake with caution. Shake with caution. <laughs> shake with caution. They have issues. Uh, we got people on X. Uh, as you say, you've been listening. You got X on your head as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, <laughs> we we in tune. Now, if you're listening on X and you're wondering, uh, uh three Arsenal fans against one Man U um, uh, fan, that's just indication of the scoreline last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's such. That's such an I did not set that up. <laughs> this is one of the most graceful. <laughs> man, you oh no, 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 he is, he is, he is. He is. <laughs> So now, in addition a lot, Jimmy ran away last season. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no yeah. Yeah. Oh, he ran to Rwanda. Why, why are you <laughs> saying these things about me? Please stop. <laughs> As we're Arsenal fans, we're all excited about you know um, how we played last season mm -hmm. and how we're moving into this season. We've not lost yet. Um, we hope we don't lose. Um, and then we've not performed at the extreme best the way we started last season last at season. least yeah. but we are going to Everton Goodison Park probably our last game at Goodison Park before they go to their new stadium no 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 we'll play more games we'll play one more uh, season I think, no, I think one more season no 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 but but they're they about to sell They've oh. just been purchased. No, no, no. Right? Yeah, no, they're about to sell. So, so, most, money so, no, so, so the money oh, might come in. So, so We've seen the, situations where new owners come in and the money just doesn't show no, up. No, no, no. So, so, so the plan is wow. that the money that comes in, like that the money that comes in is going to be used to finish up the stadium. I mean, we'll that, that's what, that's what uh, Mashiri wants. Okay, yes, back, back to my little monologue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Wait before the ownership banter. <laughs> <laughs> Wait before the ownership here? banter <laughs> commence. Where I was going with Il Bliss is, as an Arsenal fan, you hear Everton, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, three points. But that's not the case. The last time you got three points at Goodison Park was when Arsene Wenger was coaching this team. And you all know at that time you were singing for Arsene Wenger to leave. Oh, yeah. um, do you think Arsenal has a chance to actually get all three points? Or would this be a banana skin uh, waiting for Arsenal to step on? Um, I'm also confident with the energy. I mean, post Man U, post right. Manchester, right. Manchester United game, right. we're in a great space mentally. Mm. Um but it's not going to be easier. It's it's good. So as where you, how do you see it play now? Scoreline. Scoreline. Um, I see it. I see it. Two one, Arsenal. Um, win. Yeah. Okay. Also, remember that your favorite show will be available on YouTube this Monday. So, of course, if you're looking forward to the surprise of what's going on, you can look forward to that. All you need to do is simply subscribe. Hit the subscribe button as they do on YouTube. Uh, hit the subscribe button and like uh, if you. Uh, you like the show and leave a comment and then let us know what you're thinking about the show. Remember, it's all about you guys right here on YouTube. And of course, for our X Space Mans, them, you get me? We appreciate all of you for coming through. Ill Bliss. Hey. You strolled in, did your thing. Yeah. Last word from you, Bim, uh, Biola. Um, I think United absolutely have to win. 
<laughs> it's just, always have Disney to be. <laughs> <laughs> he goes back to United. <laughs> yeah, 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 this, yeah, is, yeah. this is me giving you a chance to just be someone else. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's been a great time on the show. Good to see Ely. Yeah. Um, yes, my brother. I mean, I've taken a bit of a battering from you guys, haven't I? Uh, still uh, still uh, your yeah, king. Yeah, but I'm back next week, all right? All right. Yeah, we'll be back next we'll be week. Back. I love this Later. show so much. Yeah. <laughs>